any session, you can, if you miss any session, you can always come back to it and you'll find it ready for you on the web portal. We'll show you how to use that at the end. We'll share a link. Also, we're going to be using the chat as usual and the Q&A, so kindly be respectful in your responses. But if you have a question, please put it in the chat or in the Q&A so we can jump right into it. I'll quickly walk through the agenda, but before I do that, I want to let you know my name is Sam Chimera, and I am privileged to be your facilitator for these sessions or your host for these sessions. Super enjoying them, and we've been having them since towards the end, it was actually September. So if you're new here, we've been doing this every Thursday, except for maybe one or two Thursdays. But we're always excited to get here to have these sessions. Let me walk you through what the agenda is going to look like, and then we'll jump into our conversation for the day. So we'll have a welcome note from Mr. Peter Andumia, who is very special to us in these sessions. Then we'll get into an interview chat with our guest speaker. Again, the topic is succession planning, and we'll be jumping into that a bit more. If you have a question at any point, please put it in the chat. Even if the person has just started and you have a burning one, just put it there, we will get to it. And then we'll have an overview from Corpside. So Corpside is what does the bank have for us? How can it support us as SMEs on our journeys towards growth? Okay. And then we'll have a quick call to action and we'll wrap up our session. If you're new here, absolutely want to say you are welcome. We've had these sessions for quite a while. Every Thursday, 11 to 12.30, we are here. We take some time to learn something, to share from each other's knowledge, ask questions and get some insights that can help us. But also we hear from the bank, ask our questions. If you have questions about your loan facility, what opportunities the bank may have, all that can be done in this space, an hour and a half, and then we get back to our business, right? So I hope you're excited to get into it. Now, let me have a quick welcome note from uh, uh, the very one and only, Peter Ndumia, he's the head of non-financial services is not a stranger to us, a good friend to us in this community. So I want to welcome you, Peter. Over to you, Peter. Many, many thanks, Sam. Hope you can hear me. Yes, loud and clear, sir. Great, great. And uh, we are glad again to meet yet another Thursday and uh, we are delighted. And good morning to all of us and the participants who are in this session today. We want to take this opportunity to welcome you again in this session uh, today, Thursday, 6 April 2023. Uh, we are delighted uh, to you know, meet here online and deliberate and share some of the questions that you have. Uh, and I really appreciate all of you for availing your time and uh, finding this session useful to you and to your businesses. We again thank you for being our partners. Uh, in this bank, you know, transacting with us and uh, getting solutions from us. We don't take that one for granted. We really appreciate it. Uh, again, thank you so much, Sam and your team, Fiona, the AMI team, uh, for again uh, agreeing to be part of this uh, session, uh, this program where we always come in to add value to our customers. And uh, a number of us could be new to this session and we just uh, want to uh, let us know why again we do this every, every Thursday. And uh, the reason as to why we do this is uh, we want to keep you uh, well informed with the resources and the tools that will help you to manage your businesses better and also uh, to continue growing in your businesses. Uh, it's a commitment that we have to us as uh, MSMEs or who are the entrepreneurs to keep you growing in terms of the solutions, uh, the trainings, uh, being part of the non-financial services program that we have as a bank. Uh, in addition, uh, we always ensure that uh, we remind you to be visiting our branches, have a very good relationship with uh, our business bankers and our you know, branch managers to ensure that uh, they understand our needs and they will be able to continue to support you in all the things that you're looking for. Yeah, today we are here again in a very, very special, uh, with a very special topic, uh, a topic that you have requested us to have and a speaker that again, you have also asked us to have in this session. And we'll be talking about business succession planning. And that uh, we are trying to think of how, yeah, and I see Gladys, uh, who is our speaker, our main speaker today. Today, you have enough time you know, to, to let us know what we need to do to make sure that we run our business all through and we run these businesses to the next generation. 
and uh, I'm sure we'll get a lot of tips and insights around it. Thank you, thank you, Gladys, for allow you agreeing to be part of this uh, program. So, um, so we we encourage us to share questions that you have, and uh, we'll also be coming again as a bank to share our commitment for you this year, 2023 and beyond. So let's engage, let's participate. I uh, use our question and answer tab and the chat box to talk to us, and we are available for you. And they will also be available for other upcoming events, uh, just to make sure that uh, we continue smoothly. So thank you so much, Sam, and over back to you to continue with the session. Thank you so much, Peter. Please, again, we'd like to appreciate our speakers, and I'd like to constantly be asking you to do that. Let's appreciate Peter. Peter is one of the core people that puts this session together, and he makes sure he keeps running uh, with the session, and he's always here, unless, of course, one or, one or two other things happen, but he's always here, and we want to say thank you, sir. All right. So as you can see, Gladys is here already, but I'm going to hold off on Gladys sharing yet, but that gives us the, 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 the sense that she's energetic and vibrant and ready to get us started. <laughs> okay, so we've had a little bit about the top side, so from, uh, from Peter. Let me let you know a little bit about AMI, especially for those who are here for the first time. So this is a collaboration between COP and AMI. So AMI is about enabling ambitious businesses across Africa to thrive. AMI in full is African Management Institute. And the way we reach uh, entrepreneurs such as yourselves is especially through digital platforms. And we've been able to use that to go extend our reach to like about 39 countries across the continent. We have been able to reach about 42 plus thousand people in terms of training and also lots of digital content that we have in terms of uh, training programs and so on. So content in five languages, uh, English, French, Swahili, and uh, I keep forgetting the other two, but English, French, Swahili are the, uh, some of the, the five. And then we have lots of practical tools. We believe in making sure that uh, entrepreneurs and, and founders such as yourselves have practical tools. So it's not theory, it's practical tools that can help you move your business forward. Speaking of practical tools, if you are interested in growing your business, uh, there was an, uh, a video that was playing before and just hearing from different people about uh, how they, this particular program impacted them. And if you're in Kenya, and of course you are, in, and you're open for a virtual training, it's not face-to-face, -face, so you can do the training in your own time, at your own pace, and get these practical tools and these practical sessions that we do, then you can go ahead and click. There's a link in the chat that you'll be seeing shortly. So africanmanagers.org slash GYB. Click on that and then find out what else you could maximize. So if you want to go to the next level, whether it's in your talent, your operations, your money practices, all these different things, practical ways of growing your business. So that's an opportunity you can maximize. Um, maybe I've forgotten. But, oh, yeah, of course, there's full scholarships available. So if you want to maximize that, please go ahead. And this is a season when we can always use a scholarship, right? Okay, so to jump into our discussion, we are going to be having a Gladys Mboya, Managing Partner, Mboya Wangongu, and Waiyaki Advocates. So we had uh, Gladys here uh, about two weeks ago. We had the same webinar, and she, we had uh, we had uh, uh, Gladys and two other special gentlemen, and they were dealing with the subject of uh, lessons and insights on SMEs and successful family businesses. So we got lots of highlights there, lots of insights, and the response that you had was that I think we need to have a further discussion about, okay, now how do I get to leave the business behind? How do I plan that? What are the legal implications? How practically, where do I start? Is it too early? Is it too late? I'm in the middle, where do I go? Okay, so this session is in response to your request and demand, and we're here to serve you, so why not? Thankfully, Gladys said yes when we asked, and we are super excited to have her in this session. Now, before Gladys comes onto, uh, onto video and, and just shares, I'm very curious. So we already had like at the end of you, hand, if you if you manage to finish your business and you're able to move on, what would you do with your time? Lots of people want to travel. So lots of people want to travel. Lots of people want to see the world. Someone wants to teach children how to code and get into the wonderful world of IT and how it can how impact the world. So many different things. Others want to travel and just eat food. I think Fiona wants to just travel and eat food, and it's brilliant. Now, when it comes to our businesses, I have a different question to ask you now. So if tomorrow 
So God forbid, right? God forbid, God forbid. But if tomorrow you are unable to run your business or your businesses, if you have multiple, what would be your biggest concern? I'm curious, what would be your business concern if tomorrow you had to be unplugged and like beyond tomorrow you can't do any of these things? What would be your biggest concern either about yourself or about your business? Please let me know in the chat. Capital, okay, okay. If you can give us a sentence, that would be helpful because now we have to guess what John meant by capital, okay? Justice would be concerned about payment of bills, okay? So if we had to unplug you today, what would be your concern about your business? Business continuity, thank you, Dennis Karuk, uh, Karugu. Um, justice would be concerned about the payment of uh, my bills. Let's see where else we are. Others are still reflecting. That's absolutely fine. Uh, I see. Um, Sami would be uh, concerned about effective structures for going concerns. Okay. Okay. Jane says, who else can do it for me? That's a very valid question. Philip would be concerned about existing customer support. How will they be concerned? How, how will they be supported moving forward? Um, Catherine is concerned about investments in building. Okay, who's going to handle that? Timothy Kaktai, find out what caused it and how to address it. Okay. Murizi, business continuity. John, working capital to expand the, the size. Okay. Customers, growth moving. So lots of responses coming in. And I, I invite you to please look at the chat. Stanley's question is one, who is taking over? If not me, if I'm not here, who is taking over? So uh, Pauline would say I'd look for other opportunities, okay? Um, Susan says, what happened and what is the way forward? Okay, so before I bring our speaker up, and I'm going to ask her the same question because she runs a huge business, okay? Boya Wangungu and Wayaki, that's among, uh, just one among many businesses that she's possibly running right now. So if you go to the HR side, the, the human resource side, there's two types of planning that are kind of emphasized. There's replacement planning. Um, that means in case of an emergency, who takes that position and who does that work, okay? Which is fine, we get to understand that. But when it comes to, when you go to HR and you're looking at success, succession planning, you're considering, okay, so think about the key roles in your organization. Think about the potential people that you have, the potential leaders that you have, and how you can grow them aggressively to be able to carry that responsibility. So that's a version of succession planning. But in line with our conversation today, we invited Gladys to speak to us about succession planning in terms of, I'm interested in passing on my business to the next generation. What considerations do I need to make? What does that even look like? Okay, so Gladys is always dealing with this subject with her clients. And she gave up her time to be here. And I want to invite Gladys. Gladys, if you could switch on your mic and please uh, say hello, and then we'll jump in. Hello, how are you? Hi, everybody. Very good. Gladys, what have you been up to since the last two weeks? Key highlights, what? please. Slogging away, slogging away. <laughs> any, any, any success highlights that you've experienced? Um, I think for us, a success highlight is getting um, uh, uh, clients, uh, getting clients who appreciate us, uh, getting clients to acknowledge that we did a good job. That's a success for us when a client is happy. Nice, nice, very good. Now, Gladys, what came to mind when 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 we asked this question? Um, what would you be concerned about if tomorrow you were unable to keep running your business? Ask Gladys. Okay. Yes, exactly. Uh, who would run it? Like somebody said, who would run it? And um, I think what we have done, we have put in place a succession plan here. And so as much as I am one of the partners, we continuously um, invite new partnership, young blood, fresh blood uh, to join the partnership. We go through a process of, of training them, of growing them into the position until they are ready to join the partnership. And even when they join the partnership, we um, continue to hold their hands because we acknowledge that, you know, we're getting on. <laughs> At some point, you'll be retiring. Who's going to carry on the business? 
So we have um, tried to create a, like a pyramid, a structure where, you know, an upward mobility structure for our staff. And some of the things we do, we do, we do continuous appraisals, et cetera. But some of the things we also look at is, are we aligned? Our values, are they aligned? You know, so even as we invite uh, people to partnership, we look at that. Those are very, very uh, critical issues because a partnership is like a marriage. You really have to have, you know, at least from the starting point, the same values. Gladys, at what point did you start thinking about succession planning? I'm so curious because you've been, the organization has been around for a while, but when did you? When did we start oh, thinking about it? Um, I think, yeah. I think we, we thought about it almost from the get-go. In the beginning, you're just trying to establish yourself. You're trying to see where's our organization going. But as you go along, you're like, okay, we need to add more people. We need more bodies. Um, and how are we going to do this? How are we going to grow them? So it's a discussion we've had, I think, for many years. You know, um, uh, Implementing it is not easy. You know, because especially when you you kind of become used to doing things the way you're used to doing it, and now you're inviting somebody else, which means another level of responsibility and reporting. Um, it it's not easy, but if you put structures, the right structures in place, at the end of the day, I think I feel like more heads are better than one. You're not alone in your thinking, in your strategy. You have other people helping you, but you're very careful about who you have put in certain positions. Now, um, I'm just gonna ask a couple of questions uh, as we are chatting with Gladys. If you are here and you have a question, please put it in the chat regarding this subject, anything, whether you've just started thinking about the subject or from your experience, if you have an insight to add, please go ahead and add that. We have a Q&A section, please use that. And also a chat section, wherever you put your question, we'll make sure we come back to it and we'll be having this conversation for about the next maybe 20 or so minutes and then we'll get into the q and a now gladys um why is it so important if i may ask or maybe do you have a different definition for succession planning and why is it so important i think um, of course succession planning is important and um it's important as you say for continuity so that you don't have to worry that if I'm not here, what's going to happen to the business? And uh, the process of succession planning is, you know, it's a process. It's not something that you wake up today and you decide today I've got a succession plan because it's something that will take a lot of thinking. And you, what are you processing? You're trying to think about what will happen, how will I tra transition from where I am to bring in maybe new managers in, Although today we're talking, I think, about family businesses, I think. Huh? I'm not sure we, we're we talking could, I, about general. I think we, we, talking, like we, could, we could start general we could start and then, general, then jump into general, family. Yeah. Although it's, it's still more or less the same. But you, yeah. you're trying to think of who's going to be, who are we going to, um, to raise up to manage the business? Who are the people that will be thinking about growing? And then on top of management, what about ownership? Um, who is going to be an owner of the business? Because if I'm not there, who will be owning the business? So succession planning is about looking at um, growing managers into that position and looking at growing owners into an ownership position. Yeah. And so it's important because you need it for stability. You need it for continuity. You need it for certainty. So that actually as things are going on, you're not wondering, actually, the moment I leave, the business dies. And that could also be your goal. Your goal might just be, it's for me, when I die, let it go. But for many people, they want to see their businesses growing to a certain point and continuing. So it's important, even as you're doing succession planning, what are my goals for this business? What do I actually want for this business? Do I want it to grow? Do I want it to um, continue um, forever and ever? Do I want it to continue until a certain point and then we sell it? You know, what are your goals for your business? So a succession plan is really important because it helps you think around those issues. Pauline in the chat immediately says, sell the business. <laughs> She's more like, well, this business of succession, no, 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 you to ra raise it, sell it, you know. And But what I hear you say is it's really important to establish why, what are the goals? 
Yeah. How does that, when we talk about goals, how is that a challenge if, if, for instance, you have certain goals, but the next generation might not, whether that means your family or maybe the next people that you're bringing on? What's the tension there? There is a tension, of course, and especially if you're the one who has started the business, you had a goal. You had a reason for starting that uh, business. And then you bring in your next, the next generation and they're thinking differently from you. Maybe they have a different idea from you. And um, one of the key things that we're going to be looking at today is the importance of communication. You must communicate everything. We have to get away from this um, um, culture. And it's, it's a bit of an African culture, I think, where we're very secretive about the things that we have, even secretive to our own children who we want to maybe take over. Communication is key. And the importance of communication is, is um, you must learn to listen to one another. Just because you, you have succeeded up until this point, doing it in a certain way, the next generation might come up. You know, I mean, look at technology has changed. You know, things have changed. Things that we were not using before have changed. The young generation have a way of thinking that we may not have. Why not listen to them? and actually see how can we input or how can we um, include you in this thinking process. So even as you're doing a succession plan, you're not doing it alone. You have to make sure that you're doing it together. The family must be involved in this succession plan. And that's what I mean by communication. You must have a way of communicating your plans for the future. It shouldn't be so haphazard. You should have a format of actually communicating. Different people have different ideas. It might end up um, causing certain frictions, certain tensions in the family, and communication then becomes so key. How are we going to communicate things without you know, necessarily um, being at loggerheads? There's nothing wrong with disagreements. It's just that we don't want it to become a full-blown uh, family feud, for example. Yeah. Speaking of communication and African typical African tradition and culture, when you start speaking of succession planning, immediately, most of our minds go to, ah, uh -uh, so you want me to die? Oh, what, what, you know that whole tension around that? How do I, if I'm dealing with that, how do I actually overcome that and just kind of deal with the reality that, one, we are getting of a certain age and we've been doing this for a while, we need to start thinking of transitioning, or even, I'm just starting, I know at some point there must be a transition. How do I overcome that initial inclination to kind of fear the discussion? I think it's important to, like I keep on saying, it's about creating legacy. It's important to think about your legacy. And uh, it, it, we're not saying that succession planning means that you have to leave today. You have an important role. You are the mentor, you're the leader of that family, you know. So, what do you want? You want your business to grow. How do you want your business to grow? You have to start bringing in the younger generation. How do I bring in the younger generation? You have to start by training them, by being a mentor to them, by showing them the ropes. You don't want that if something happens to you, the next generation happened many, many, many times where the leader of the, of the family business dies and then suddenly um, the, the children you know, take over the business Either they've never been involved in the business or they've kind of been involved in the business, but there's been no real strategy of growing them into the business. So then what happens is many times you find that these businesses end up failing because they never had a full understanding. And so succession planning is not about waiting for you to die. It's about you training your children um, to actually take over the job and to build your company. The more you are, the better for, for the company. So you're helping your children to, to grow, you're training them, you're making sure that they understand the business so that in the event that you may not even be dead, in the event that you become sick, yeah, yeah. Um, who is gonna take over, you become incapacitated. Are you gonna worry about it? No, you, you don't want to worry. You want to, to be sure that actually, even if I'm not there, I know the business will go on because I have put in the proper structures, the proper training for my successors to take over. Yeah. Very good. And Thank you know, you so even as you, and even as you grow, and even as you grow, um, grow older, you know, as you transition out of maybe like management leadership position, 
you know, there can be a position for you, like maybe in the board as a chairman, because th they will always need um, guidance. You know, you've got some old companies, even like in the US where the founders, you find that they, they died at the age of 90 something, but they have become advisors and, and, uh, and chairmen, you know, so there's always a place for them if need be, if need be. <laughs> you said yeah. if need be twice, so I think there's if something there. They may not want they, some, some people might say, no, I just want to hand over and walk away. So, yeah. Okay, okay, good, good. I was just wondering if the yeah. new generation says, because uh, there's also, what's that uh, situation? I think... Uh, uh, founders, I forget the term, where... Sorry, I think because you're the founder now, it starts to interfere with the future. You know, that whole tension found, I think, founder syndrome. So yeah. we also have to be mindful. Could you touch a bit on that? And then we'll get into this family dynamic. Yeah, of course, there's that tension. You know, this has been your business. You're the one who has grown it. You've brought in your young'uns. And then all of a sudden, they're having ideas of how, how to oust you because they feel <laughs> that your, your ideas are archaic, they're too old, yeah. then they're modern, they need to, you know. So there's <laughs> that tension that will, will be there. And also, just the letting go can be very, very difficult. It was, it was yeah. your baby. And uh, letting go, and, and in your mind, you're not feeling like you, you trust these guys to, to um, take over the business. But that also means that to a certain extent, you have not prepared them. You know, there's been something that has not, you have not prepared them to take over. That's why there's that lack of trust. Um, you have woken up every single day at a certain point, and now they're telling you it's time to slow down. Some people want to slow down, but there's some people who don't want to slow down. So how do we manage? How do we manage this? And like I said, communication is going to be key because, uh, Family member dynamics is very, very important because you don't want, you know, like if my children oust me from a business, you see, they're still my kids. We still have to meet at family functions. Will this affect the family dynamics even at home? And so communication is so key. And that's why it's important to prepare, to, um, to have structures and plans in place on how I will retire, for example, how they will take over, at what point will they take over? But you see, as long as I'm a, the majority shareholder, they may not be able to kick me out. I might be the one kicking them out. But again, it then causes friction. So I think it's about learning how to communicate with one another and having policies in place, even for communication. Very good. Uh, you've mentioned family dynamics. So there's, it's, there's, it's something to be said in terms of you need to assess your business and also the family dynamic. And you brought that in. What does that look like? How What's the importance of assessing where the business is and also what the family dynamic looks like? I think, I think it's important to assess in the sense that how is my business doing, first of all? Actually, should I be selling it at all? <laughs> should I be selling it right now? You can decide you want to sell it. You know, just because it was your, a family business, it doesn't mean that it has to go on for generation and generation. That could be a decision that you long made. So before you even get into a succession plan, you must look and see what what how is the business how is it set up um do i want it to continue do i want it to sell you have to look at the family dynamics who are the people in my family that i want to to take over maybe i want my son or my daughter to come and work with me and they don't want to they have other ideas they have decided that they want to do something different but i i had a plan that they are the ones who would come in you know so what then happens to this succession plan so you can't have a succession plan and insist that I want to bring in my daughter because um, that was the plan I had for her. She had a different plan. And so again, communication, sitting down and, and, and agreeing with the family, what really are your goals uh, and what are my goals? Maybe because you don't want to join the family uh, as a manager, I'd like you to be a shareholder. I'd like you to be an owner. You know, is that, is that okay? Because I want you to own part of this company. Uh, and those are the discussions that one has to have. You don't have to be in management. You can be um, an owner. Maybe you don't even want to be an owner. So you must accept that this uh, family member is not interested in being part of this succession plan. So it's important to assess your company, to look at it and see where's the company going and where, uh, 
are we as a family um, in this whole dynamic? I'm curious, have you, I'm, I'm imagining, in your experience, you must have dealt with situations like this. How does this tend to work when there's this tension, especially at the end and someone is trying to pass on a succession plan, but maybe some of the children are not keen on it. How do you tend to resolve that? I think the, the, um, the, the biggest problem with that is you're bringing in somebody who is not willing. Yeah. Somebody who is not willing or even doesn't have the passion that you have. What happens to the company? You know, it, it can kill, it can kill the company, I think. And um, I, I know one, one family, there's one family, I know what they do, they, um, their children don't want to be in the company, but they want to start their own companies. So what happens is that um, the, the parent will um, assist them with raising capital, et cetera, but they will own shares in those children's companies, you know, so that they are somehow still all intertwined you're doing something different, but somehow we're all connected so that everybody can understand what everybody else is doing. And so what they do is they'll have these family meetings and family council where they'll sit together and everybody will say what they are doing. Um, and in a way you're kind of intertwined because you have shareholding in even your children's company because maybe you're done with help them to set up. And so that's accepting that your, your kids might not be, um, not all your children would want to be in your, uh, in your company. And when I say children, I mean, it might be children, it might be cousins, it might be uncles. It's a family, whichever relative, you know, it could be an in-law. So you have to, to decide who is the best person for this and don't force somebody because, and many times people are forced into it because somebody dies and then you have no choice but to take over. Yeah. Um, some people will take over and thrive, but a majority, you know, like we, we said the last time, um, very few, you know, just about a third of the companies that are created today will go into the second generation and even less will go into the third generation. And that's because we don't have a shared vision. Right. Very interesting. Um, there's a, I was, we're doing a training somewhere. I think it was with a, a, a different group of people. And one of the gentlemen actually said, cause he was into banking and now all of a sudden his parents have grown old and now they want to pass on this business to him. And for him, he's like, I have a whole career with my banking, with my everything. You're trying to hand me perhaps farms. I have no idea, no interest in that. And of course it must break the parents' hearts. So I'm asking the artist, how can we prepare the next generation? Are there practical things that can be done so that this child, this little child here, you, you know, how do you communicate subtly or directly? Excuse me, I have a plan for your life, and <laughs> there's a, you know, there's a path I need you to. You can do other things, but I need you to carry this as well. How do you communicate think, communicate that as you go? I think as they as they say, it's important to start early. You know, when kids are young, they they want to see what you're doing. They're interested in it, yeah. even as they grow. And I think it's important to start early. Uh, let them start knowing what businesses you do. I see a lot of Asian families do that. You'll find that kids are in their business from a very early age. By the time they're teenagers, they kind of have even grasped a good um, aspect of the, of the family business. Yes. Uh, by the time they're young adults, they are completely immersed in it. They know it um, inside out. It doesn't mean that they can't go out and do whatever it is that they want to do, but they have an understanding of the business. So that even if they become, even if they don't become managers of the business and they become owners of the business and they hire maybe um, non-family members as the professionals in the business, they have an understanding of the business. So you're taking over a business. So like even this, um, your friend, the guy who's saying is in banking, you know, for him, yeah. it would be important for him to understand the business. He can be an owner. He doesn't have to be the one to go in and sit there and manage it, but he can actually hire outside help, you know, and, and uh, who would report to them as the owners. Uh, but, you know, you can only be reported if you understand what the business is. Many times when you don't understand, it's very easy for people to shortchange you. So I think it's important to start the training early. Then you have those children who are very interested. But you know, how are you going to ensure that they understand? You have to start by training them, by mentoring them. They should start from, from the bottom going up. You know, there's some, 
families that say, no, we want you to go in, before you come to work into our business, we want you to go and work somewhere else. So you have a different experience and then you can come into the business. So you have to start mentoring them and training them very early on and uh, make sure that they understand all aspects of the business, no secrets, no hiding, no saying that I don't want my child to know we made a million shillings because now they'll think it's there. Let them see the good, the bad, and the ugly. If there's big loans, if there's big issues with the company, let them see, let them start understanding and, um, and training them. And the importance of that is, to, is that even as a child comes into their business, maybe the non family members might not feel so bad in the sense that they can see this is somebody who is working hard, who is learning, who understands the business. It's not just, um, as we call them, sunny boy who has come and taken over the business because he's the heir without a spare. You know, you want, he wants to look like he's enjoying the business, he's working the business, he has been trained and he understands yeah. the business. Yeah. yeah. Very good. And not just, I know there's a comment on, don't just uh, assign them roles. All of a sudden, Sunny Boy is the director of operations and he has no, no idea. Yeah, they have to grow. They have to grow. You have to, actually, as you're doing a succession plan, you have to first of all, look and see what are the roles? What, where do we want them to grow in? And you don't push somebody out of a role to put in your son. It must be, there must be an available slot, number one. Um, mm -hmm. Not everybody will be a good CEO, not everybody will be a CFO, not everybody will be a COO. Maybe as you're watching him, and they need to be appraised, you really need to appraise um, your family members. Maybe as you put them in the company, watch, see where their strengths lie. Is it in sales? Is it in marketing? Um, are they good leaders? You know, and then you slowly grow them into the role. And it's even, even as you're growing them, you need to get buy-in from the non uh, family members. You might have a very, very good um, manager. Um, you can use him to be a mentor to even your, mentor, yeah. your, your children. They must learn humility. They must be humble. You know, you can't come in feeling that, you know, this is my, my kingdom. Um, there's a, there's a, an organization we are dealing with where, okay, the, the children are not um, in management, but they were shareholders. And they would come into the company every now and again to collect money from the poor CEO who, who didn't even know what to do. And eventually that company actually collapsed because there was so there was such a lack Tight, of entitlement. Yes. And they would just come, oh, I need this amount of money. Oh, give me 400,000. Oh, give me 300. And then they go off. And um, the CEO who was not a family member was too stressed to tell them no. And Anyway, eventually that, that uh, uh, company collapsed. And of course it collapsed. There were no structures in place. So you I'm have glad to, it's yeah. Um, now I'm thinking in terms of, okay, so we've established the importance of a, a succession plan. There's some cautions that we've gone around. So let's come down to, um, I imagine, what does the template look like? What key things, if I come and say, this is my succession plan, what yeah. do you look out for, especially on the legal side? What do you need to see for you to say, yes, that's a good plan? What key elements and, and what do they look I think, like? I think, I think the first thing of a good succession plan is to have clear goals and objectives. Who are we? What are we about? What is the importance of having family in the business? All these things have to be um, discussed. What's our vision? What are our goals and our values? What are our values? So you need to actually sit down and say, as a family, what values do we have? What are our goals? Where do we want to see this business, business growing? And then, you know, you have to look and, and, and in the succession plan, because it's a succession plan, what are the plans for retirement? Yeah? What are the plans for, for cash after retirement? You know, will we yeah, have, cash flow. will I be able to, to, <laughs> to have money and, you know, and then, the next generation, what, what, are their, what are their goals when it comes to management? What are their ideas? And all these things being, um, um, uh, you're doing this plan together, not just yourself, you, the next generation, and maybe key employees. What about people who are not um, family members? Uh, for example, yeah. do we have an opening for them? Do we say we want a financial 
um, a, a chief financial officer who is not a family member? Do we want a CEO yeah. who is not a family member because maybe the family members are not are not capable? So the first thing is you're looking at what are the, what are our goals and what are our objectives, and then what is going to be the decision making process when we're making a decision? How will that process be done? What are our governance structures? How what structures are we going to put in place? So we have, for example, a board, or if it's not a board, we have a, maybe um, a group of advisors, and then um, to manage, we have management, we have a CEO. What are our employment policies going to be like? And employment policies, even for family members, you know, and making sure that even this um, employment is not just being left haphazard, like, oh, you come, just tax this job. No. What compensations are we going to pay? What are we going to, how are we going to remunerate um, everybody in this, in this organization? And I think yes. it's important to just look at, um, and then finally, of course, you have to have an estate plan. You have estate to plan. have an estate plan. And an estate plan will involve having a will, having a, a trust. How, in the event that I'm not there, what happens to my shares? What happens to my, to my, um, to my, uh, to the, to the, the business. If a key person is not is, is incapacitated or is unable to take on the job, how is how are we going to continue? And then you must have on top of that a transition plan so that in the event that we are not there, how are we transitioning from, from this generation to the next generation? So you have to have those, you know, you have a clear objective, you have decision making policies, governance, and then you look and see how are we going to do the transition? Yeah. Yeah. Of the things that you've mentioned, and I'm just going to re echo back, there's quite a number of things that go into success. I see why you're saying it requires a lot of thinking. You don't just do it, it's not a day's work. Yeah. And consultation and, and all these things. Um, one, so you mentioned just to come back, it needs to have a clear what's the vision, what's the goal, what are the values? That needs to be clear. Yes. And I'm just re echoing this for everyone in the room. There needs to be clarity on decision-making process. How are these decisions going to be made? You know, is there a board, advisors? What does that look like? We need an employment policy. People are not just going to be handed out jobs right, left, and center. For family and for non-family, there's remuneration. Money is always tricky. How are we handling the money and compensating people? We need an estate plan, and you mentioned the transition plan. Okay. Yeah. So of those things, which one tends to be the trickiest? from your experience in these legal matters? I think the, the decision-making process is the trickiest and also the trickiest is who is going to do what, yeah? Um, you, you may, maybe different uh, people might be thinking, I think I'm the one who's supposed to be the CEO, but ah. in your analysis, you have looked and you have seen, actually this person is not, them, it's my child, but he cannot be a CEO. It creates yeah. tension. And, um, and it's, it, it, and if communication is not done in the way it's supposed to be done, it can even cause division in the, in the business and of course, in, ultimately in the family. So you, you have to be very careful about some of these discussions. They have to be done in a very um, uh, considerate way because um, if you had been following a process of maybe growing um, the, your children into the business, Maybe even for themselves, they'll be able to see. And you have a, an evaluation process. You know, make sure you have an evaluation process for them, and uh, let them see that actually for you, you're not best suited as a CEO. But that doesn't mean that you're not going to be uh, an owner of the business. You'll be an owner of the business. You'll have shares in the business. But when it comes to management, your strengths are in marketing. So this discussion, and it has to be had with everybody. And by the way, like I say, when you're doing the succession plan, everybody is included in it. Everybody is included in it. So when you start having this discussion of succession plan, you know, it might take months, you know, just to sit down, prepare, look at, and, and agree on the way forward. Yeah. It's, it's tricky. Wow. And then of course, of course, um, you have to have a dispute resolution mechanism. It's one of okay, the things tell me about that. Then that's interesting. Yeah, because you know, we're all human. We all, you know, we'll all get into disagreements, and um, you must agree. How are we going to be resolving our issues? 
What, what are we going to do to make sure we resolve? And if we can't resolve, who do we feel would be a good arbiter for us that can sit down and actually listen? And, you know, and, and because it's family, in the beginning, you want it to be as amicable as possible. You want mediation to be as amicable as possible. Um, and it's only, I think, if it really goes haywire that you may have to think of other dispute resolution mechanisms like arbitration. And unfortunately, eventually going to court. But you see, once that happens, you've almost broken down the family. So it's best to look and see who are the people that we trust that if we have an issue, we can actually sit and, and have a discussion. And in fact, in the family, it's important to have um, what I call a communication policy. If I'm disagreeing with you, how am I going to communicate with you? Because in families, you have to ensure that there's respect for one another and one another's views. And maybe I am so sure that my view is right, but I must learn to actually listen to somebody else's view. That must be in the communication policy. I see you, communication seems to be a very critical factor. It's the biggest, it's the biggest, because when, when the moment you lose communication, you lose everything else. You see, family businesses are based on emotions. They're based on emotions. And then you've got a family business and you still have to go home be a family at the same time. <laughs> same yeah. table, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Communicating, figuring out how to communicate to you. Managing people is not your strength. I need you to focus on, you know, where someone yes. may have had some expectations otherwise, you know. Yeah. It can be interesting. Okay. Um, so we're coming to like the last two minutes of our time discussing this. Ladies and gentlemen, if you do have a question, please put it in the chat or in the q and A. I'm just going to take a moment and just double check where that is. Of uh, if anyone has a communication that they'd like to make. Um, I see lots of uh, uh, positive response in terms of this is really good in terms of eye opening. Thank you very much, uh, uh, James. If you have a question, put it in the chat. I'm going to ask uh, maybe two other questions. Um, what's the role of LEGO in this whole <laughs> plan? But before we go to uh, what's the role of LEGO, and Gladys, of course, you're a very core factor there. How often should I? so? Today I have a plan, it's documented, I've sat with Gladys and it's there. How often should I be reviewing that plan? You should have, you should, you should, you should, even in your documents, you should allow for review because um, things are dynamic. Um, you're not going to have, you're not going to be static. And, and when even the other family members know that this, this, is, this can be open up to review, it relaxes the family members. So it's not cast in stone. Um, one of your younger children may have gone and done um, artificial intelligence in school, and then now they come and they want to bring in something that even in your, in your mind, you have not even thought about. You know, you have to review and see, actually, this is a different way of looking at things. Let us open up, let us sit down and discuss. Oh, so we can even have an opening for uh, an artificial intelligence officer, you know, I mean, so you should be able to, it should, it's dynamic, you're continuously improving, you must continuously change. It's, you shouldn't, it shouldn't be set in stone, but at least it's a good guide for everybody. Yeah. So when competences change, if someone all of a sudden is great at a new thing, like, um, you know, marketing and what you thought was different, those roles yeah. can change and, yeah. and so on. Okay. Yeah. Um, so Eric, oh yes, what's the, when does legal come in? What, like, at what point? Legal, Unfortunately, legal. what we know is that it tends to come in at the end and Gladys can't help you, but just figure out how to resolve at the end and you kind of learn somewhere, but what, what's the, what's the common, what's the needed practice? What's your advice? Actually, legal comes in at the beginning, middle and end. Uh, because <laughs> okay. one of the things, okay. one of the important things in a family structure is that, um, and especially when you have different um, shareholders, it's yeah. so important to have a shareholders agreement. Many family companies don't have a shareholders agreement. Um, they'll rely on the, maybe the articles, the, uh, the articles of association. And, you know, it's, it's not enough. You need to have shareholders agreement. And in the shareholders agreement, you will have all the issues of, you will discuss all the issues of succession. You will have, you will discuss how voting is going to be done. It will be agreed on how retirement will be done. It's got how transitions will be done. And if, if a family member needs to, to sell 
out or want to get out of the business, how that um, transfer is going to take place. So a shareholders agreement is a binding agreement between um, the shareholders. And it's one of the things that if you don't have a shareholders agreement now, you need it today. That's number one. Then um, even with regard to um, succession uh, planning and the uh, vision and mission uh, documents, it's kind of like a side thing that you can do preparation of the family charter. Because when I talk about communication, communication will be done through family charter, family council, family meetings, you know, so how, how are those going to be structured? And then um, of course, when it comes to asset planning, which again is not in the end, is right at the beginning, um, asset planning, um, you have to prepare an asset plan for your business and you have to prepare an asset plan for yourself. And so family comes in a lot, <laughs> a lot legal comes in a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all, all through the process. Okay, yes. so let's switch very quickly to some quick fire questions. Uh, Boom Bosire is asking, uh, well, saying perhaps advocates fuel family business disputes. What's your take? <laughs> I think I think families encourage advocates to fuel family disputes because you have not yet put <laughs> in your structures in place. When you look at um, the disputes that you normally will see usually are the disputes after somebody has died. And you'll find a lot of those disputes taking place. Why? Um, somebody did not put their asset plan in, in place. And then family members start feeling like, oh, I deserve more than this other person. And then the fight begins. They don't. And there's something about family emotions that is so irrational. It's just difficult to, to manage when, it, when it's too late. And um, Everybody goes, I will go to my own lawyer. Somebody else will go to the next thing. You have 10 lawyers for each of the 10 family members. And uh, the only person who's winning is a lawyer because you didn't have, it's cheaper to prepare your estate plan now because it becomes more expensive if you wait till the end. Yeah. I really love that answer. Thank you so much. Um, Eric is asking, is it convenient to, is it, I guess why is it convenient to share the tides and turmoil of your business to your younger children, such as losses and things like that? I think it's good for them to have an idea. You know, in fact, when you think about, um, um, like I was telling you, a lot of these Asian businesses, you know, the children know what's happening in there. Maybe you don't have to tell them it's so drastic. I mean, Full you can detail, huh? tell them depending on their age, age bracket, you right, know, right. that there's ups, there's downs. Is good, the bad, and the ugly, but don't, don't, you know. But as they grow older, it's easy, it's good to tell them so that they can also see what are the solutions. Uh, and if there's no solution, they also know there was no solution. Yeah, and I suppose if I may add, the level of maturity, yeah, their capacity to take that information. Exactly. Um, exactly. Okay, very good. Um, when building a legacy business, would a family business constitution stand the chance to guide your heirs? What does that? What are your thoughts? It's, it's one of the, doc when, we, when we look at documentation and we're talking about, remember what I was telling you about communication? Right. There are certain documents that guide you in communication. There are certain rules that you have to put in place and everybody must be in agreement. So these rules, regulations, the constitution is not done on its own. It's done together with all family members. And so you will put in your constitution things like how, you're going to run the business, timekeeping, what time will people come in, how we're going to respect, who is going to be the leader and the spokesman of the, of the family at this stage? You know, how do we answer questions to other people? Is it everybody to talk at the same time? Um, how, you know, so the constitution is a definite guide. You have to have, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a good document to have a family constitution. Okay. And again, um, yeah. The lawyers are there to help with that. The key lesson we are learning, Gladys, here is that lawyers are here to help. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. So, Patrick, so we'll take maybe two or three other questions. If you have a burning question, please put it in the chat. We'll be wrapping up shortly. <laughs> Patrick Murugu is asking, could you, I, I think there's, um, maybe Fiona could guide us later, but I think there will be a special session about uh, setting up family trusts and those tax benefits, things like that. 
But what do, what's, since we have you here, Gladys, please, what, what's your comment? Could you tell us a bit about what does that setting up a family trust look like and what are the tax benefits of that? I think a family trust is, is, a, is a good thing to have. And um, one, one of the benefits of putting, of putting um, your assets into a trust is that it no longer belongs to you, number one. It belongs to the trust. So the trust, which is a family trust, and so if it's, um, if it's, a, if it's Gladys Mboya, it will be called the Gladys Mboya Family Trust. And um, then you have to look at the reasons for, for, for doing this trust. Is it, do I want to protect the family assets so that even if anything happens to me, the business continues without stopping, without having to go to court for probate. You know, the trust is already working on its own. And the trust will have its own rules and regulations on how trustees will be appointed, who will be the next trustees, who will be the chairman, for example, of, of, of this trust. Where is the trust being funded from? Is it, are we, are we uh, uh, moving our, the shares of our company into this trust? Are we uh, putting our properties into this trust? Am I creating a trust because, and, and many times, of course, if you have children under the age of 18, you must have a trust anyway, whether you have it in, um, in a will or, or in a, in a, in a, in a, whether the trust is created in the will, which we call a testamentary trust, or whether you have prepared a living trust. Um, so if you have children under the age of 18, there must be a trust anyway. And then, um, and if you have children over the age of 18, maybe you want a trust for them until they're, they're 25 years, or maybe you want the business to be managed through a trust just for protection of the family, protect them against creditors, against people coming in and claiming that these are my things. Uh, um, yeah, the topic of trust, like I say, is a whole topic on this. It's topic. a wide one, yeah. 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 Okay, well, Gladys, thank you so much for being here. I'm very curious, um, just one last question from my end. So we have different people in the room. So some of us have just started this business journey, others are in the middle, others are like years and decades behind us. When is, is it too early? Is it too late? What's your advice around that? When, when should I start thinking about? Someone might be saying, I'm just dealing with the beginnings. I'm in my first, my second year. I don't, you know, I'm too busy working on the business. Succession yeah. plan can wait. Others are like, I know it will be fine. What's your yeah. take on that? That's my last question. Then we'll do parting shots. Like I say, it's never too early. It's never too early. It's never too early, it's never too early. in many ways. Nobody promised you tomorrow. There's no such thing as early. Today is the day to start. Yeah. And you, have, you might have issues on how you want to set up or, um, and maybe even if you're um, an older company, maybe you're a younger company, you want to know, um, how do I ensure that actually I'm doing things the right way? If you're an older company, are there things that we want to do now, like, like raising capital, like uh, eventually maybe even going onto the stock exchange? You know, there's all the whole myriad of things. It's never too early. It's never too early. Never too and early. if anybody needs, if you need, if anybody needs any consultation of, of sorts, please feel free to come for consultation. Your first consultation is free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need to get the sound of a major applause because we've just, this is a major benefit. We just need to let them know. We watched you during the COP Bank webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, please let's get that applause going. Otherwise, Gladys may retract this option. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's not legally bound yet. So, well, I mean, I don't have to get into that. But I want to say thank you so much. So your first consultation is free. Gladys, yeah. where else can we find information? So, so someone has been inspired, like, hey, I really need to get into this. To educate myself before I go for that first session with Gladys or anyone on her team, where do I get some of this information? Okay, without looking at boring things like the Companies Act. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I, think, I think there's also a lot of things in the internet if you need to, but again, you have to be careful with some of the things. Yeah. That you there's know. a lot of misinformation as well. Yeah. 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 Mm. Okay. Okay. Very good. Gladys Mboya, thank you very much for being here. We definitely appreciate you. <laughs> a round Thanks. of applause, ladies and gentlemen, if you could. Thank you. Let's appreciate Gladys. Thank you so very, very much for all these insights and for your time. Thank you. <laughs>
Very good. All right. So we have just had Gladys Boya, managing partner Boya Wangongo, and uh, sorry, just a second, and Wayaki advocates. Thank you so much for being here. This was really extremely exciting, exciting for us, and and in the end, we also got an offer of consultation. But yes, I would insist also first do your homework so that uh, your consultation can be of greatest value to you. If you want to follow up on where Gladys is and what she's up to, you can find her on LinkedIn. Just type in Gladys Mboya, you'll be able to find that. There's also a website, so just you can find all that through the normal means in terms of internet, okay? So thank you so much. At this point, we'd like to turn our attention um, to Pop Bank, and I think I'd like to invite Peter. Peter, please, maybe if you could come and give your comment, what was your biggest takeaway in this session? I'm very curious to hear what your biggest takeaway was from, from Gladys' session. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Sam, and th many thanks, Gladys, for those uh, insights that you have uh, really given to our participants and our customers today. I think uh, one, one of the things that I have thought about uh, business is even as you start business and as you continue to do business, uh, is to have that plan to say, what is the goal? What goals do you have for that business? Uh, do you just want to you know, grow in business and uh, once you're done, you, that's it, you can sell the business? Or do you still have a goal to pass on that business to a family member? I, I think that is that comes out very, very clearly that we need to have a goal uh, of how we want our business to uh, to be, uh, even after we are done with it, we want to sell, we want to pass over to someone else. I think the other aspect that she has really uh, clarified is on the need to have communication and uh, just to make sure that uh, the, everybody is aligned. And uh, you must have a very, very clear laws in terms of who is to take up uh, the, the, the laws of this business. Uh, someone would be interested in uh, marketing, but, but I think uh, looking at where you are, you see a CEO in that particular business. So I think that communication uh, needs to be very, very clear. Uh, and of course, ensuring that uh, there will be no friction in the family, even as you have that uh, succession planning. Uh, I think there are quite a number of yeah. things. Yeah, there's, there's and, uh, so much, yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so for, for our last couple of minutes, I want to hand it over to Peter to speak to us about how COP can assist us on this journey. So we'll take a few minutes, maybe 10 or so minutes. And then after that, if you have any other questions, so we want to open it up to any question you may have around COP, uh, in your relationship with COP, in terms of uh, maybe loan facilities, any inquiry that you may have. And then also in response to Peter's presentation about COP and how they can help us move our business forward. Peter? Um, over to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sam. And I think for us is just, again, to echo on our commitment to support uh, our customers and our business customers in this case to continue growing, even when it comes to the solutions that we have. And uh, if you're able to take us to the next uh, slide, Sam, is to say, as a bank, I think we have uh, a kitty for our business customers. Uh, this is um, a, a solution to make sure that uh, they, they, they have the cash flows, we have the working capital facilities, and we have the trade finance facilitation, we have the asset finance solutions that uh, again continues to support our, our businesses to continue to grow and even to thrive. Um, I, we, we still have enough resources and, and, and solutions to also give you financing for both used and the new motor vehicles. Uh, should you be looking for a partner to support you again on the same, we are ready as a bank and we have very, very good solutions uh, that are offered by our relationship managers. You realize that we have quite a number of branches across the network and we have business bankers or relationship managers who are ready and they have the information that will help us to support again on the, these solutions. Um, we have worked very, very uh, hard to make sure that we have quick turnaround time, especially when it comes to loan processing. We want to make sure that we give you a decision within 24 hours. If you have an application of a facility and uh, nobody have come to you within 24, hour, uh, 24 hours, please feel free to 
ask because we are working very tirelessly to make sure that we have very good customer service and to turn around uh, that, that process in a very short period. Um, the digital channels are very, very key for us. And as a bank, we have really invested on uh, enhanced digital channels, uh, just to make sure that we also facilitate you as our business customers to continue transacting, to collect uh, money and also to make payments. And we really want to encourage all of us to take advantage of our digital channels, the MCOP cash, our COP till, and I know we have had uh, some trainings on some of these products, but I think they have really been able to, uh, to support us even to acquire facilities quite easily. Why? Because we are able to collect and this money is coming to us uh, uh, as a bank in terms of the accounts that you have. Uh, the other key product, and I know we, again, we also talked about it in, uh, in some time, is on our mobile uh, MSME loans that we have a limit of up to 1 million. We continue to support you on this. And as I indicated in the, uh, in the other few sessions, uh, your cash flows comes in handy to support you qualify for um, this loan facility are very key solutions, again, that support you uh, to get the cash that you really need to drive your business. We have a uh, Government of Kenya credit guarantee scheme uh, for our business customers or MSMEs, uh, which has a preferential interest rate of 14.5%. Currently, um, you can also take advantage of the same. You just need to have the tax compliant uh, compliance certificate uh, and some registration certificate for your business. So uh, please visit the branch and also ask uh, on the on this particular solution. Moving on is to say that uh, over and above what we are offering, we continue to commit to support you with the trainings. You realize that we are having these sessions every Thursday, the MSME webinars. Uh, we are rolling out uh, additional uh, physical forums across the network uh, in, the, in the next few weeks. Uh, we'll be you know, uh, congregating around your regions just to make sure that, again that we also have the physical touch points. Uh, we talk about the new developments, we get feedback from you and continue to train you uh, more on other solutions and other topics that you also have. Again, we are also supporting our branches uh, to have what we call business clinics or trainings where they also bring a number of you in a session, in a, in a, in a training venue. And again, we uh, get a bit of trainings uh, uh, you know, on different topics. The MSME International Trips will also be uh, letting you know when we resume on the same, uh, just again to expose you and uh, some of us will be interested to learn other emerging markets. Um, the last thing is on the MSME online portal. Uh, we encourage you to visit our website just to again get more information on the uh, uh, on the recordings, so the webinar recordings that we have, uh, the solutions that we have, details, the account packages that we have. Uh, with the tools that again you can also use even to assess uh, how much you pay like a loan calculator so please take advantage of our website and you can just go down to the uh, msme uh, tab and i'm sure you'll be able to get more details again on the on the same uh so i think for us again is to really encourage us to keep uh, uh banking with us if you don't have an msme package account with us that is the bronze, silver, or gold. Please uh, have, a, have a, you know, an agency to have this account because it will help you uh, when it comes to the financing and it also help you when it comes to collecting money from your customers. Uh, the, you know, bank consistently and digitally take advantage of the channels, uh, maintain that close relationship with our relationship managers and our branch managers across the network and feel free to disclose all uh, the financing needs that you have. So uh, the MSME online portal that I have talked about, you can uh, pick that link, just to visit and see what uh, materials that are there, the information that we are upload, uploading every now and then, just to make sure that uh, you have um, clarity of the solutions that we have and 
uh, the recordings of these trainings. Just, just make sure that you are equipped with the information that you're looking for. So I think uh, those are the few commitments that we wanted to make as a bank, just to make sure that uh, uh, all of us are growing. And as I indicated, we are working very hard to make sure that uh, apart from uh, all the financial solutions, we also have tools and the trainings. Our uh, idea and our objective is to see you grow uh, from one level to the next level. So maybe we can pose a bit some for maybe one or two questions uh, as we try to wind up. Thank you so much, Peter. Um, so again, right now, I'm just going to invite questions immediately in response to Peter's uh, presentation. But if you have none in that regard, we can go ahead and use the time to address any other questions you may have. So if you think of a question that you'd like to ask uh, a key representative from CO, because that's what uh, Peter and Mia is in this, uh, in this forum, please go ahead and put that uh, question in there. And uh, I'll just give you a few seconds. Or maybe as you type that in, I'm just going to do some a bit of a quick fire. Um, let me just see. Physical forums for networking, that's coming through. Yes, Maxwell is excited about that. Uh, Gary Sean is asking, do you have a circle as Cop Bank? Uh, Peter, maybe you help me. Okay, um, let me just say that we have uh, been supporting our circles or the cooperative societies, uh, both to bank with us and also to support uh, with the loans to online to members. But as a bank, we may not have a we may not have a circle that is uh, for business customers, but we have a co bank circle maybe for the staff members. Uh, but uh, should you be uh, requiring any information or support on um, maybe joining a circle or you know, managing a circle, we also have what we call COP consultancy. Uh, COP consultancy is um, a subsidiary of the bank that also supports on uh, you know forming circles and training the management of uh, circles and, and especially when it comes to the management of the circles. So uh, should you have more uh, needs that that, that relates to SACO, please feel free to let us know uh, so that then we are able to direct you to the person who can support you on the same. Good. Um, Christine is asking, she's interested in business clinics, especially for beach operators. Any opportunities coming through? Okay, so thank you. Thank you, Christine, for this. Yes, we, as I said, we have what we call the contents or the training materials for uh, different business people. And uh, in this particular case, uh, maybe we need to know which branch is near you so that uh, even as we allocate different business clinics in the networks, we would be interested to, uh, to see where you are and, and see if we can support you with, um, with joining one of our business clinics and, and see if we can congregate a few Beach operators uh, to be part of the people who be trained by by us. So maybe maybe we can uh, find out uh, more on your branch and the contacts so that we can support you after the session. Leonard uh, Cheponga is asking. Um, I have accounts with cooperative, but it has not been easy getting a loan. How do I proceed? Is that something that can follow up, or is that what what can Leonard do? So Leonard, thanks. Thanks. Uh, I think we uh, we have tried to to uh, indicate some of the things that makes you qualify for loans easily is uh, the fact that you banking well with us. Nobody should deny you a loan based on the um, on the on you know the purpose is clear, the business model is clear, and uh, you have banking with us, and you have that need. I think uh, a commitment to us is to say that uh, our branch manager should be able to look at, uh, at, at what you have, and what you need, and they should be able to support you on the same. The other thing is on the e-credit, you can also take advantage of the same. Please be checking on the limit, the message that gives you uh, an alert of the limit that you have as a, you know, as, a, as a customer or as a business owner, so that then you can also leverage on the same. Um, John. Googie as well, I think that's the same concern. Luke, 
Musiga is asking, what are the requirements for LPO financing? Please tell us more about that. Yeah, thank you, Luke. Uh, the LPO financing, in this case, the, um, the, 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 the requirement by some of the uh, companies uh, to be able to uh, you know, to you know, to uh, supply items, uh, we normally do uh, LPO financing to uh, customers. The only thing you need is the the document itself, the LPO itself, and uh, the tender document uh, showing that you're supposed to, um, you know, to, the, 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 you're supposed to be paid this amount of money. Just submit uh, the LPO, uh, the lock purchase order and the tether documents and of course your identification documents to the nearest branches and they should be able to assess and uh, see how much they can give it's quite quite easy for you to uh to be supported uh, with an lpo financing very good let me just double check um there's a gentleman at all lady that they have not mentioned still stuck and my business needs money for stock it was a bit stock financing is there anyhow I can be helped even with area with with areas of an Elon. Uh, would you like to comment on that? It's in the Q and A. Peter. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Um, yeah, stock financing. Uh, again, we also have. Remember, we we trained on a, a new product for for the, for the bank. Uh, for the stock financing, especially if you're in uh, agrovets, if you're in uh, energy. Uh, if you're in trade, that we are also able to give you short-term loan loan facilities that uh, should be possibly be paid within one week or two weeks. And uh, the good thing with the uh, stock financing is that the money is directed uh, directly to the goods that you're buying. And, and I think we have a, a solution on the same. If you require the e-loan again, it's just to advise that you keep banking with us and. Also visit the branch. I'm sure they will be able to tell you this is what you need to do to qualify. If you've not been banking well, or you have other loan obligations that you need to clear, so that then you are scope, uh, you know, be able to improve. Uh, then, then they should be able to advise you on the same the key credit. Thank you so much, Peter. Let me just double check. Uh, Francis is asking a question. Let me just look at Larry's. I have some business accounts with Pope and also business consultant and SME training on capacity building. Um, can Coop give its customers chance to be partners with their MSME training? If possible, who do I reach out to? Larry is asking that question. Okay, Larry, thank you for that. Yes, uh, I think even when we go to uh, to the branches or to hold those physical forums, we always look for people who can also support us on the same, and especially some of the customers who benefited from us. Uh, my advice on the same again is to uh, talk to your, you know, uh, relationship in the branches. Let us uh, get that that contact uh, so that we can guide you further how to go about it. Very good. Thank you so much. Please, one more time, uh, help me appreciate Peter. Um, I'm just coming landing the plane we have five minutes to go uh well, okay well add in one last question Linda is asking how quick does the lp of financing take At, is there an average or it depends on other factors an lp of financing should uh, you should yeah. be able to get uh feedback within the same 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 day uh, and should actually be supported within the same day if you have all the necessary documents so so please uh don't shy to visit the, the branch. They should be uh, able to support you within the same same day. All right. Very good. Thank you so much, Peter. And again, uh, lots of appreciation coming through, Peter. Now, Peter mentioned the web portal. I'd like to show you a demo of what that looks like. So if you may, if I may direct your attention to the screen right now. So if you just go into Google, um, let me just uh, give me a second, please. If you just go into, yeah, just let me tap that in. So if you can just type it to Google, so CoBank or anything to that sort, CoBank webinar or MSME web portal, okay? So if you type that in, portal uh, and click enter, it will take you to the bank, to the website. So this is what you'll find now under Knowledge Hub. 
and a knowledge hub, just click on webinars and ladies and gentlemen, you will find all the sessions we've had and you'll also find today. So if you want to catch up on that, that's something that you can do. All right. Very quickly, again, go to Google, perhaps type in Corp Bank uh, webinar or web portal. And as soon as you click, it will take you to the uh, Corp Bank website. And once you click on that, go under Knowledge Hub and click on webinars and you'll find a whole assortment of sessions that we've had. Now, in the past, we've had quite a number of sessions around different subjects and topics. We've looked at strategy, looked at finance, and each of these we've taken four to five weeks dwelling on. So strategy, finance, we've looked at uh, operations, we looked at uh, marketing sometime towards the end of last year. And this particular session that we've started today is looking at the aspect of legal. So if you have any questions or if you have any topics that you'd like us to touch on that are related with legal, uh, you can let us know and we'll be able to do that. OK, now to get any of that communication through, just go ahead, reach out to Fiona. So Fiona Maina is our our captain when it comes to this session behind the scenes. She's making sure things are happening. So um, reach out to Fiona Maina. This is our email, Fiona at AfricanManagers.org. And her number, if you have questions and particular topics that you'd like to uh, have discussed in these sessions. OK, otherwise, we want to say thank you so much for being here. And if you want to also reach out to us uh, in terms of COP, okay? If you want to reach out to us in terms of, uh, as COP Bank, there's numbers on the screen, there's emails on the screen, there's even a WhatsApp contact for you to be able to reach out to us, okay? Thank you very much. And today, that's all we had time for. And we will be picking it up. We are always here every Thursday from 11 to 12.30. So 11 to 12.30 discussing a particular topic of great partners to you and your business. Right now, we've just started our sessions on legal. So for the next four to five weeks, we'll be looking at different aspects of legal. Today, we're looking at uh, succession planning and what that what advice we can get from the legal side. And we had Gladys, and she was wonderful. I believe she was. And I ask that you reach out and just say a thank you via LinkedIn if you can. But we want to say thank you for being here. And ladies and gentlemen, that's all we had time for. It's exactly uh, 12 29. Can I interject just briefly? Yes, Lawrence. Uh, yes, uh, don't forget that uh, we are supposed to close with a prayer, which I'll be glad to take through. I Even love as it. I say a big, as I say, a big thank you to, let me actually just say thank you to Gladys before we go. Um, so thank you so much, Gladys, even for accepting to come and support us. I think I was remembering a story we were told in high school that there's a time a mouse was told to cross a, a river and the river was very intimidating and quite overflowing. So the mouse waited until an elephant came and quickly jumped on the elephant's back and they crossed the river. Then when they got to the other side, the mouse was like, we made it. We came across and we came across <laughs> it. So in this case, I think I'm the mouse and uh, Gladys is the elephant. So when this proposal came, it's quite a tough one, but uh, Gladys has been able to help us. She's both a professional and uh, the lawyer and all advocate uh, company secretary. We have, her, we have her credentials, but on top of that, she has run a business for many years. So she's also able to identify very well uh, with the audience and to address the issue. So it's a big thank you. Thank you. Thank you to Gladys. And to tell the audience, Gladys is not charging us any fees for coming to share with us all of this knowledge. I'm sure if it was something that she was billing for, it would have cost us an arm and a leg. So we say uh, such a big thank you to you, Gladys, for accepting our invitation. May God bless you. And to ask the audience for all the issues that she has raised and um, all the legal needs that you may have, please uh, reach out to her. And just to emphasize that what she has said concerning that uh, legal comes at the end and uh, people create trouble and by the time you come to lawyers there's a whole mess that is true even where we sit in the legal department sometimes customers pass on unfortunately and then their families get stuck they want to access money they didn't have any plan on what to do if uh, the lead business owner was not there the company the company's articles of association are drafted in such a way that if the main shareholder dies the business is crippled until they can get a court order so some of these things you can see it's either not getting very good law Lawyers or not involving lawyers when you do them. So I would really emphasize where you can, please reach out to, to Gladys for support. Thank you. Uh, sorry, Sam, for interrupting and Peter, but I needed to, to, no to say that. Thank you. Mm. Very good. Now, just stay on video and you're going to say the prayer. But I speaking of one other thing I'd forgotten, I wanted us to do a quick 
feedback poll. So I've just launched a poll. Everyone should have a poll on their screen. And this is just to help us evaluate the service that we're providing you. So one about the guest speaker, was today's session interactive? How applicable is this information that you're receiving? Okay, and how was it? How easy was it for you to join today's session? These are elements that we are constantly trying to improve. So we'll give it a minute, and then we'll hear a prayer from Lawrence Karanja to wrap up our session. But we definitely do appreciate you for being here. Uh, just one more minute. Um, if you haven't responded to the poll, we are waiting for you. Um, very good. Go ahead and do that. Okay, uh, coming to the end of it, just maybe a few more seconds and then we'll be wrapping up with a prayer. Okay, let's see. So about 40%, I'm just going to give it, if you haven't responded, kindly do, and then we'll finish together. I see other people are responding with their emojis and we definitely appreciate it. Very good. All right, so at this point, I'd like to invite Lawrence. Lawrence, if you could please say a prayer for us and then uh, we will bring our session to a close. All right, uh, thank you, Sam, and thank you, everyone. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, for this uh, good day that you've given us. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to sit together as a uh, bank with our facilitators, uh, Sam, and with our customers and also with Gladys. We are grateful, Father, for causing this to happen and uh, making it uh, uh, be a success and for the good information that uh, uh, Gladys and uh, Jumia have been able to share with our customers. We're so grateful. And we say that, and we pray that this knowledge is going to help them, Father, to build even more formidable and stronger businesses because we do need these businesses for our economies to grow, for our families to prosper, for our societies to thrive. We pray that every business here father will not go down it will not perish but it will rather be strengthened and it will even give more and more employment to people more and more business to its suppliers and better and better services to its customers we pray for wisdom for all the business owners here and their employees we pray for long life we pray for good health we pray for divine help that comes from you preserve them god and help them we also pray for some we ask that you continue to help him and bless his business let it grow from level to level he has supported us and held, and held our hand and we ask that you will increase him and you multiply him thank you also for gladys and for the farm of Mboya Wangongo, we ask that, Father, you're going to bless that farm. It has continued to be a good farm and helping and supporting many businesses. We ask that it will grow and it will even be better in the years to come. Help them to achieve and to, and to surpass their expectations. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Oh, well, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lawrence. Very good. Amen. Welcome. Thank you for... Thank you for being here and it was a wonderful session. We look forward to seeing you next week, Thursday, same time.